All right, so I'm going to do a video on mesh deformations, and I want to get to the point quickly. So let's just start by showcasing exactly how it works very briefly. Uh, so over here, I have a stem, and when I go over to this, you can see that I'm deforming the shape. So this is just using a quad. Now, it's not just scaling this. For instance, I could do something similar by scaling it like this, and you can see how it scales. But that's not what I'm going for. In this case, these two points along here and here will actually drop down to these two points. So they actually reorient their sides as well as part of the mesh. So let's just watch that again. So here they are at this full size, and then here they are at the smaller size. And you can see that the shape has deformed. Additionally, so once I have that one out there, we kind of see this green stem growing. And then I also have this leaf over here. So the idea is that a full plant might start to grow from this concept. <clears throat> okay, so uh, these are the two basic objects. Let's take a look at the code. How exactly do we deform a quad in this case? So I have this script called rect mesh is what I'm using to do it. So let's dive in. All right, uh, the basic functionality is that I get the mesh filter. I get the mesh filter that holds onto the mesh information and then I grab the mesh. Okay, from there I grab the vertices. Now, if you're planning on adding or removing triangles from this, then you're also going to need to get the triangles array, and you're gonna, I'm not covering how the triangles work in this. That's, uh, for this one, I'm using the triangles as they exist, but changing the position of them. <clears throat> okay, so assuming that we don't have anything, we're gonna grab the original vertices and grab the target vertices as well. So we have two sets of vertices. The vertices are each of those points. So when we look at this, you can see that these blue points are representing each of the vertices. One triangle is produced from this side, and one triangle is produced from this side. Okay. So original vertices, we're grabbing those, and the target vertices, so they start out the same. But ideally, we're going to set each vertice by lerping between the original and the target based on a percentage field. That's this percentage field right here, percent to target. As you can see, it's getting percent to target, the percent that we're passing in, it's setting it to percent to target. Um, there's a different way to do to get into here as well. But, okay, uh, so we create a list of vertices uh, that we're going to pass into it based off of the original vertices length. Then we go through each one, we calculate the new vertice, and then we say mesh.vertices equals the new vertices. That's it. This is in local space. Uh, it's important to know that this is in local space, so 0, 0, 0 for your x, y, and z means that it is the center of that spot. It is the exact same spot as your point is. Um, it's also important to know that uh, the mesh does get reformed based on the transform of the object. So the transform holds on to the scale, to the rotation, to the position, and so all of these offsets are going through that filter. All right, so we have our vertices. Oh yeah, so anyway, so our original vertices, we set our new positions. <clears throat> now, now I'm gonna go back through this again and we'll construct a new one using this script and I'll show you what each part of the script does. So you can also see a full copy of it on here. I'm not having this shared out because it's literally like one file uh, that actually does this but I might share it out as some part of something larger. But all of this is really towards uh, the ideas that I'm experimenting with for uh, plant generation, uh, to kind of see plants grow and move around as the, be able to see that in real time. Okay, uh, so anyway, let's create another leaf. So I'm gonna go to plus 3D object and I'm gonna use a quad. Oh, and uh, one other thing on this is I'm not playing this right now. This is all in editor code. So if I were to actually run this, I could still grab this leaf and uh, let's see, oh, expand out, sorry, that one, expand out this leaf and I can change everything on the fly while the game is running too. All right, but I'm, that's not my intention. I have this new quad. Let's give it a leaf material. So there's its leaf. All right, next, I'm gonna add the mesh rect. So the mesh rect, I want to, I don't wanna add this until after I have my mesh filter in here with whatever shape it's supposed to be. If I change out the shape, I pretty much have to replace the rect mesh because everything about it is for one specific mesh. All right, so rect mesh. So I now have this new one. Oh, let's clear that up. 
All right, so in this one, the start and the end points are the same. All of these, these are the original points, these are the end points. Now, let's show the origin. So you can see here's the origin, and see how these are, are labeled element 0, 1, 2, and 3? Over here we have orig, or for sh original, original 0, 1, 2, and 3. So these line up. That's a way that you can figure out which object you're looking at. Ideally, I would create design tools to go around this to make it easier just to drag and drop individual points on this. Um, but I wanted to keep everything simple and light for now, and I'm not sure what my end goal is yet, or how, this, how I plan to have it operate in the end. So I want to wait a little bit before putting in some of the design tools on this. All right, so we have original vertices, um, and then we have target vertices. If I am set up over here, oh yeah, and let me show, I can show you target vertices too. When I did that, it's T-A-R-G number, um, it overlaps because they're all in the same position. Okay, so target vertices and original vertices. When I'm at 0%, I am at the original vertices. So let's start with that one. I move this all the way to zero so I can see the shape of the leaf as I'm working with this. Okay, now first of all, the arrows over here are pointing in the positive direction. So red is X, green is Y, um, and we don't want it to be negative along the X. So I'm going to take the X positions and set these to zero. And you can see how the zero went over to here. It's, it went from over here to over here. So that set this up. If I do the other one, this leaf will be pretty close to having its stem or the point of origin start from the pivot point which I think is kind of important for creating a plant that can grow, that the pivot points are where it's growing from. All right, so in this case, I also have uh, original two, which is also a negative number over here, and I'm gonna set that to zero. Okay, now it's not quite what I want. I also wanna change the length of these. So uh, let's see, instead of 0.5, I'm gonna make that one. Oh, is this the right one? Yeah, one and Oh, no, 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 not Y. Get, put that one back. Uh, all right, so what is this one? We want X of zero. We're going to change that to, uh, oh, these ones, the 0.5. We're going to change that to one and one. As I said, I would use drag tools on this to go ahead and be able to move these positions around. But, uh, okay, we can see over here, now that we have this kind of rescaled out and positioned over, uh, we can see its point of origin of the leaf is down here, but the transform is up here. So ideally, I'm going to alter the Y positions a little bit. So let's see, orange zero, origin, origin zero. Uh, that's going to be over here. I'm going to drag that up until I end up finding the crossover. And you can see this isn't flat. This isn't a square anymore. Uh, and that's okay. It doesn't need to be. Okay, so that's our starting point. And now, right now, its growth kind of puts us back to where we were with a slight deformation in its appearance. Um, but I'm going to use a trick here. This is actually where I want the leaf to end. And also, I want it to rotate on this. So I want this leaf to be over here. And let's drag it and put it right there. So we got two leaves here. That'll be its end point. Okay, um, from this point, I now need to edit the target vertices, where it's going to go. But I want it to grow into this position, but right now, it's this is the position I want, but I put it in original. It's really easy. Just right-click on here and say copy on original, and then right-click on target and paste. So you can paste the values. Now they overlap each other. Now we're going to do something else in here where we're just resetting everything to zero. Also, you'll notice that these numbers are like negative 3. It's negative 3 e minus 17. So it's 17 decimal places out. It's like 17 zeros and then a 3. <laughs> That's, uh, uh, and it's negative. Okay, so uh, anyway, that's close enough to zero. I'm not even sure why it comes out that way, but I usually like to just reset it. I don't know why the default quad comes out that way, but whatever, it does. All right, so we have that now. Uh, and so when I scale this down, you can see it grows from that particular point until it gets up to 100% and we have our two leaves. The rest of the rotations, of course, work. So I could do this and we end up with some of the light shining off of it. Uh, let's see, can I get some more light to shine on it? There. <coughs> I 
really makes this look 3D. I mean, it, technically it is at this point. Um, but that is, uh, it, this would be much better with normals. Okay, so that's how I would set this up and add it. And this information is now saved to the scene. That code that's building it up, let's go through the rest of the code real quick. So first of all, all of these are private fields, so nothing else can manipulate them. We're altering meshes, so if we change the original mesh uh, without an understanding of why it's doing this, that can really mess up our code. Uh, as I showed before, when I offset the... Uh, actually, maybe I didn't show this, but if I take this element and I just subtract it, look at this, uh, an infinite loop of uh, index exceptions. So I'm actually going to put that back, Control z and then clear it because some of our code is actually based off of uh, like this one. We have the original, the original and the target, and we're just referencing that off the original vertices length. Um, we're making an assumption that we're not editing it, but the editing tools allow you to subtract and add. So that's something to be careful of. <clears throat> All right, ideally I might hide this information. For instance, if I know it's going to be a quad, then I will make, a, I'll just make an array of four that's going to be available, uh, or four separate fields to edit for it. Okay, um, that's one key thing. Now let's go through the rest of these. So they're private. I, I don't want anyone from the outside code messing with this. If I need something to do it, then the private is kind of a way to emphasize that the code for manipulating these values should be housed inside of this class. Okay, so we have our original vertices and our target vertices, just arrays of vector threes. We have the Boolean fields for showing origin and show target, and then finally a private mesh, so we don't have to keep getting the component. I could also be placing up here uh, require component, and in here type of, and not camera, I want type of mesh. There. Okay, so now it no, we're, we're guaranteed to have this. We can't add it without it. Or if we try adding it, it's going to add a mesh that's not actually going to have vertices. So that still might throw an exception here when it tries to get the mesh out of it. I don't know. And no, it should still be able to get mesh. This is the part where it might throw an error. Okay, um, so on validate, we have the on validate and start doing the exact same thing. So when we run the game, it's basically checking to see do we already have original vertices? If we do, great, use them. Um, and don't reset this stuff. So when we first start a game, we theoretically should never see this. Uh, the only reason that we would, uh, that it would execute this code is if we were starting to create this at runtime. And then we procedurally placed what our target vertices are going to be. Uh, and that certainly can be done. You can do something like that, use a tool like this uh, to apply to a particular target or mesh, um, actually set the mesh field, and then just up or pass in the mesh, and have it do a deformation on you. Uh, just take the values and uh, alter them a little bit um, so that you end up getting different tree shapes, for instance. Okay, uh, let's see. Set to percent, um, I went through that one. Okay, this one over here, on draw gizmos. This is how we're actually showing uh, these different lines inside of it. Come on. So we see all the origins are overlapped right here. I'm gonna... Oh yeah, and these are 3D objects, so it really depends on like where your camera is set. I didn't actually have these aligned when I did that. I just kind of set them up to where they showed up. Okay, anyway, um, but you can see orig origin is all showing up over here uh, near the stem, but they're overlapping. The numbers overlap each other but they're green, and then there's also a green dot, though you can't really see it since the tool is overlapping it. Uh, though you can see the blue dot and target values for these ones. So on here, I have show origin and show target. So if show origin is enabled, we set the GUI color or the text color to green, and we set the gizmos color to green as well, which is the circle that we see, or a sphere in this case. Okay, and then we go through every one of the original vertices, and we transform the point. Now, what transform point does is it applies the exact same transformations that you get from transform, scale, and rotation that that object has, as well as its parental structure leading up to it. So you end up getting the position exactly where it is. So if we suddenly rotate that object, this is still this this position will rotate with it. 
So if you're planning on creating something where it's going to be able to drag and drop the utility, each individual item, um, then you'll want inverse transform point as well. Uh, that will let you take a point from the real world and convert it to a local space variable or a local space position. Okay, then we're telling it to draw the sphere. So it draws that circle at the world position that we found for this. And we call the unity editor.handles.label. This is giving us text. And we say orig, or original, i. And we're passing in the index we're looking at. The other one is basically the exact same thing, except it's showing the target variables. And as you can see, I'm even using the same loop variable because I'm trusting that those numbers will be the same. And if it's not, the exception should be immediate. Um, all right, so we have target vertices i. Uh, we're passing in the, the, each of those target vertices. And again, drawing the sphere, we've set the colors to cyan this time. All right, that's, that's it. That's all it takes to get this code to run. Now, ideally, this is going to work better if I have more mesh val uh, values that I can manipulate, such as using a mesh. Uh, uh, what was it called? Um, right click, 3D object. Um, plane, a plane, uh, whatever, we'll add it. Uh, let's take a look at this and I want, okay, I've got wireframe. Go back to plane and let's take a look from the top. There we go. So this is a grid of 10 by 10, technically doubled again. So that's 200 triangles to make this. So, uh, well, yeah, so we got 200 triangles to make this. Now that also means that if I had on here a re mesh rectangle, it's got 200. Oh, wait, what is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Why is it going up to 120? It's 10 by 10 times 2. But it only goes up to 120. What am I missing here? Something wrong with my math? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, I'm not sure why I'm getting 120 at this particular point. Um, but anyway, you, it's expensive to have to do all of these by hand. So that's one of the areas where you're going to need to get into more designer tools to be able to, say, select a group of these and shift them around as you want. Um, anyway, uh, but I'm not really getting into the designer tools. I wanted to keep it simple. I could create other shapes, for instance, maybe the shape of a car, and I have it fold out or something out of a briefcase. Okay, so it's easy to do like 2D transformations this way for literally creating like transformers. Okay, so that's our key stuff. I think that's it. I constructed a new leaf in here. Um, we got to see how that worked. It would work, it would show up a lot better with normals. So the lighting wouldn't just be this shiny flat thing. It would actually help it make it look more curved. Uh, and I think that's it. Yeah, yeah, I think that's all the key stuff for this. Okay, um, so if you have any comments or thoughts about how this could improve or other areas that I'm, you might want to see me talk about and show how to do, um, by all means, please uh, share those in the comments and I'll try to get back to them, at least in the comments and maybe even posting videos about them. Um, similarly, if you, have, if you have code you're willing to share that goes over similar things, I'd love to do a general interview and kind of share that out with the rest of the audience on how you've accomplished this, how you've done this, what your code might be doing, and how you're approaching it differently than mine, uh, or similarly. Because there's a lot of different ways. I mean, there, there's a lot of different ways to do everything. So <laughs> let's find out which ones there are and make some good value out of it. All right. Uh, anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. Thanks for your time.